You're going to close them like this. I'm gonna role play with them for a second. Is that cool? What do you sell? I'm gonna tell you how I, how I closed everybody. This is simple. If you get 10% of this, you'll make a half a million. Put it at both ends. I like the fire cause it make hand. I'm not tired, I've been waiting. I'm not for shaking. I'm my young man, I'm jaded. Okay, everybody listen. You wanna know how to close every single person you come in contact with. Okay, ask great questions. You gotta understand this. Your job is to get people to talk. Hey, Dane, how you doing? Welcome to the store. It's an honor to have you here today. By the way, who are you here to see? Sales or serve? Oh, sales? My, my man. Are you here to see someone or do I have the pleasure of speaking with you? You're Okay, I can help you. My man. Let me go ahead and shake your hand again. Again, Andy Elliott. What's your name? Tom. Tom, it's a pleasure to serve you. By the way, what brought you into the store today? You're going to ask him a simple question. Did you see a vehicle on the internet? You wanted to come in and see it? Or are you browsing around because you know we got the best selection ever? Oh yeah, we're, we're browsing around, we drove by, we see you guys got a lot of cars, saw a couple cool ones from the road. Okay, cool. Before we run out there, it's really cold, okay? I know every vehicle on this slide. I know my inventory like the back of my hand. What are we gonna be replacing today? Did I just take control? Yes, sir. Most of you don't. You're like, oh, uh, let's, let's go look at them. It's like, dude, slow down, big dog. Hey, by the way, what are you looking for, right? Like, what are you guys replacing today? I always start with the trade. What are you replacing today? As soon as they tell you, don't get off of it. Say, dude, that's awesome. How many miles? How long have you had it? Did you buy it brand new? Listen to me. Ask a couple questions. Did you buy it brand new? What if they said they bought it three months ago? Shit, dude, you need to slow down, cat. Okay? Like, let's chill for a minute. Have they tagged it? What's going on, man? Why are we trying to trade out that quick? Something's changed. Come on inside. Have a seat. We're going to make this work for you. Tell me what's going on. Something bothered you, there was a problem you want to solve that made you get out of the house and be here with me today. Am I correct? Okay, cool. Hey, I got you. Everybody say that. I got you. You know how good it feels to sit across the table and someone says, I got you. It's cool. What do you have now? How long have you had it? Did you buy it brand new? Why did you buy it? Like, why did you guys buy that one? Like, what was different then and what's changed from now? Is that important? Okay, everything they say, me, I wasn't very smart. So I had a little notepad and I was writing shit down. As funny as that sounds, clients heard me listening to what they were saying. And since they've been heard, they'll hear me. I wrote down everything they said. Okay, got an extra kid coming. Miles are getting too high. Dash is lit up like a Christmas tree. Just got, a, just got some bad news on maintenance. It's going out of warranty soon. Um, don't feel safe, sis too low to the ground. I don't care. Just listen, guys. Keep their goals at the center of the decision. When I go land them on a vehicle and I go sell them, when it comes time to close, Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, from the minute I shook your hand and I've gotten to know you, I know that these things are important to you. And my goal today is to keep your goals at the center of the decision we're about to make. And I know that you want to solve this, 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 and this, and this completes that. Bam. Close them. Remember this, when closing, people remember the last 30 seconds of the conversation you're having. If you have a five minute close, they'll always pick up on the last 30 seconds. So no matter what I say, and by the way, what's written will be retained, I write everything out when I'm speaking to people. I write everything out. I keep their goals at the center of the decision. Now how professional does it sound when they say, I, I can't afford it, Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, my goal what I've done, my standards, our job, our core values are to keep your goals at the center of the decision. You've came in here with a lot of goals and you've came in here with things that need to get fixed and you've got problems we need to solve and we're solving all those problems. I understand that it looks like, looks like it's more money, but in all reality it's really not. Let me explain. Money justification. Let me justify that older vehicles cost more money to maintenance. Now, I know somebody shook your hand and you got a lower monthly payment, but the fact is, is that when that vehicle starts to break, where do you think most dealerships make their money? In the sales department or the service department? Service. The service department. Yeah, they're about five times bigger. That's right. The average car is $250 an hour in the service station, the, or car per hour. The average car is in service for five hours. Five hours times 250 is 1250 for just labor. The average part is upwards of $700 to $1,000. If it's $1,250 for labor, $700 for a part, that's, that's $2,000. And that, nobody's even diagnostic yet, which is $200. Now we're at $2,200. I'm not the best at math, but right now you're currently paying 
$400 a month, the new car payment is $600, which you said you didn't want to go up. But if I took the $2,200 that you would spend checking your car into service one time, $2,200 divided by 12 is about $195 a month. So I know if you drive out of here and you decide to keep your car, one service trip is going to be $195 a month. I take the $400 payment you're paying to the bank now, the $195 you'd be spending in maintenance, whether you spread it out over the year and spend it at one time, that's a $600 payment. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254, 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. Don't, don't, don't. I didn't do that. This is what older cars cost. Now the newer vehicle here, if you didn't own any vehicle, the older one or the newer one, let's pretend you didn't own any car at all. Which one would you rather drive for $600 a month? The older one plus time in the service drive or the newer one that you just get to drive for $600 a month? The newer one, right? Congratulations. We're going to pay this one off at the bank. We're going to get that one taken care of, and this is the one you're going to go for delivery. You're going to close them like this. This is how you operate. Listen, do you guys believe in yourself? Yep. The world is full of freaking amateurs. I can't tell you guys how disappointed I am in this industry. I see people sitting on their ass all day long that have never mastered the craft of the automotive industry. They've never mastered it. Yes, they sit on their ass and they complain all day long. Guys, the market right now is dying to reward you all. Customers are sick of amateurs. They're sick of them. They hate them. They despise them. They still need to buy cars. If you guys get known as the best customer service, the greatest customer excellence that ever existed, and you guys believe in yourself, and you make it fun. Do you guys feel me? Yeah. Like, you guys got to make it fun, guys. Listen, rule number one, never get serious. Because when you get serious, they get serious. And when people get serious, they freeze. You got to keep it cool. Hey, no big deal. I got you. Look, I got your back for life, guys. Hey, look, I totally understand. It looks like it's a little more. It's actually not. Let me explain. Move in. Be ready to talk. Be ready to speak. Be ready to move. Guys, understand this. You do your customers a disservice if you can't close them. Number one, they keep struggling with the problems they have. Number two, they don't get what they want because you couldn't do your job. And number three, worse of all, they can end up with the competition getting treated like shit when they should have bought from us because we're the best. So is it a disservice when we don't close somebody? Yeah. It's a disservice to the people you care about. So keep their goals at the center of the decision. I would recommend you guys memorizing this, okay? Hey, by the way, I know some of you in here today are paying attention. Actually, I believe all of you are paying attention. But I believe that there's going to be different types of people that leave this room. Those of you that leave here and totally reinvent yourself. Which, by the way, the good thing about life is you're still alive. You can change and become whoever you want. Right now, we're not, going to, we're not going to go get another job. We're going to do our job differently. We're going to do our job. People are like, oh, well, I got a better opportunity. You got an opportunity to make a million now. So if you can't make a million now, you're going to go somewhere else and make money? Shut up. Every day, day one, is this the greatest job you've ever gotten? Yes. Is this a great life? Yes. Are you surrounded by good people? Yes. Do people care about you? Yes. Now listen to me. If you choose to walk into this company and see everything that's wrong, that's on you. I can walk into my marriage right now and I can see 10 things and I'm like, oh man, this isn't good. But I can also walk into my marriage and go, dude, I see 10 things right now that I'm the luckiest man in the world. You guys decide what you see. Here's what I see with you. The transportation space, it'll pay you on the upwards of low hundred thousands to upper of high six figures. It's just how much do you want, even to seven figures, if you can be become the one percenters. What do you want? Can you take care of people? Can you help every person you come across? Can you keep people's goals at the center of their decision? Can you because guys become public speakers? Do you speak for a living? Yes. When you speak, is it attractive? Are some of you still speaking and mumbling? Uh, blah, 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 blah. It's like, whoa, dude, what? Wake up, practice. That's why we do word tracks. I haven't even hit you guys at word tracks yet because honestly to me, you guys need to learn how to create your own word tracks. You guys need to be you. Don't say something from me. When I was on the lot and the customer would say, oh, I need to think about it. I would, I, me, could get 100% of the people inside by saying, of course you need to think about it. Like I would agree with them. Like everybody that needed to think about it, I knew why, because we weren't inside yet. I haven't even given anything to think about. So I'd say, of course you need to think about it. I haven't given you enough information not to think about it. 
What I'd like to do is give you a quick five minute proposal. I'll get you all the numbers and in the end it's your decision. Is that fair? Can we do that? And I'll take my hand and I'd step back in and I'd put it like that and they'd always go, oh yeah, yeah, well that's okay. And I'd say, cool man, boom, we'd go inside. See this desk? We would sit down and I'd say hypothetically, because I don't want to pressure them. Hypothetically, when you are ready to buy, how do you want your new car title? Where do you want the address sent to? By the way, um, what is the vehicle you're trading? Oh, the one outside? Okay, cool, I'm gonna have my manager check that out. So when he gives us the proposal, he can look at it. Is that fair? Notice, uh, no pressure, no pressure. Okay, let me go ahead and get the keys. Um, also, do you have a payment on your vehicle you're trading in today? Do you have a payment? Yeah, I got a payment. Okay, cool. Let me go ahead and get two seconds of information so I can get your payment to the penny on the new vehicle. That way you have everything. Is that fair? Dude, is that fair is the greatest thing you've ever said. And I'll say, is that fair? They're like, yeah, that's fair. Dude, listen, and you don't have to be me, and you don't have to get all this information. I had a write-up sheet, I had a trade appraisal, had the keys to your car, had a credit app. This son of a is buying a car. I don't care what anyone thinks, that person's buying a car. You guys know what the rabbit hole is? They get me all the, okay, here's the, here's the entry level so everybody can understand how to get someone committed to buy a car. Get them to fill out more paperwork, give you more information, talk to you longer, they're buying a car. They say they need to think about it, take them down the rabbit hole. No problem, totally get it. Look, let me get you something to think about. No big deal. We love our clients. We definitely think that getting the information to think about it is the first place to start. Come on in. It's like, cool guys, no big deal. Now when we're sitting down, now I get all this information. I go to my manager. Now some people are ready to commit. This is an uncommitted person. I talk to my manager. I'm like, dude, I got the keys to this guy's trade. He didn't say I want to take it. He said he wanted to think about it, but now I got a trade appraisal. I got all the information. Why don't you come say hi? Let's look at their trade. Let's make this deal work. And then guess what? They're inside, they're sitting down, we got a deal, we get a chance to look at their trade. We get to see what, how they live by looking at their car, see their payoff, what rate they, rate they paid. We get to see things that we can help arm us and weaponize us to close this deal. See, now we're strategizing from the desk, which is you guys know how we do this, and then we go close. Your goal is to advance the sale forward the whole time until it's time to close. Okay, let's go to the next one. All right, so check this out, master communication. I want you to understand this. Remember I told you how to be a public speaker? Your job is, watch, ready? Your job is to make it easy for me to say yes. Okay? Can you make it easy for me to say yes? You want me to tell you how I know if you're a good speaker or not? Everything that comes out of your mouth leads me to a yes. Should you guys say anything that makes me say no? No, not unless you want to know out of me. Your goal is to get me to say yes to everything. Everything that you say, you frame in a yes answer. Why? Are yeses good or bad? Yeah. Hell yeah, they're good. Listen to me. Don't let anyone convince you otherwise. This will decide whether you become great or not. Make, frame your words. Say your words to get people to say yes. Number two, make it hard to say no. Have any of you ever explained anything to someone or somebody's told you about something and it was just really hard to say no to it? Yes or no? Yeah, you guys were like, man, I just can't say no to this. This is, this is too good. This sounds too good. I can't say no. Make it easy to say yes to. Make it hard to say no to. And lastly, make it the customer's idea every single time. you got to make it their idea. Listen to me. I tell my kids, don't cross the road. Guess what they do? They cross. I don't understand it. But the teacher on the first day of school, she says don't cross the road. They don't cross. People operate weirdly. They don't want you to tell them what to do unless they really trust you and really like you. In most cases, they like to come up with that aha moment themselves. Mmm, I get it now, right? Ownership costs, I get it, what it costs to own because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if it's a monthly payment, if it's an insurance payment, if it's a maintenance payment, what matters is what comes out of the bank. If we were to talk to your bank right now and ask them how much the car costs, Bank wouldn't really care where the payment came from. It would just ask, how much is leaving the bank? Would you agree? Work hard for your money, put your money in the bank. When the money leaves the bank, that's the real money spent, right? Okay, cool. So let's not worry about what the payment is. Let's just look what's going to be leaving the bank. That's what matters, right? Now they're in. What did I do? I just convinced them to stop looking at the monthly payment to the monthly payment to the ownership payment to the ownership payment, which is what's leaving the bank. You guys feel me? Guys, I pray you guys get excited selling cars like this. I pray the way I'm talking to you guys, you can just get 10% of this. If you get 10% of this, you'll make a half a million. Don't even get 100. I know some of you will get 100. I, I got a feeling these two little young guys are going to get 100. Okay? I got a feeling that some of you in here, you want to change. I got a feeling that some of you just gave a whole year to 2023, 
And I promise you, your life didn't change much. You want to repeat that 70, 70 more times? You want to repeat that 20 more times? If you don't want to repeat that, we got to shift. Here's the good deal. This company loves you so much that they're giving you resources to allow you to get whatever you want. I love that, man. Hey, by the way, I'm not a fraud. Hey, I've made all these mistakes and I learned really hard lessons. But today, I have a life that's amazing. So I'm going to go share with you today how to get a life that literally no one has ever been able to tell you how to get. Okay, let's go to the next one. How we must always sell. Sell with your heart, not, not your mouth. Everybody understand this. When I'm talking to you right now, do you feel like that I'm talking to you guys from my heart or do you feel like I'm talking to you guys from my mouth and I got some shit scripted? My heart. I will always talk to you from my heart. When I'm talking to somebody, everybody understand this. You can see my hands, right? Everybody write this down, micro skills. I wanna tell you how you can develop massive micro skills. You gotta use your heart, because when your heart's involved, listen, everybody pay attention. When your heart's involved, your eyes change. Your eyes physically change. I'm sitting in front of a person, and I can tell when their eyes shift. When your eyes shift, you have my attention. I'm watching your hands. I'm watching your posture. I'm watching your body language. I'm watching the way you believe. These are all micro skills. I'm watching whether you smile when you're talking to me or, or whether you're not. The way that you feel, it's called persuasion, the transfer of emotion. I'm taking the way I feel and I'm gonna transfer it into you. Listen, a lot of people in this world, guys, they got shitty lives. And I know that a lot of you know that. A lot of people, they have a pretender life, okay? They may have a nice car, they may have nice stuff, but they're in bad relationships and honestly, nobody makes them feel important. How many people in this world right now are depressed and down? Tons. guys. What I want you to do, and this may be asking too much, is to be so good at what you do and literally be so alive that you inspire and mentor and motivate people while doing your job. I want you to truly do your job so well that they wanna look up to you. I'm telling you to spend an hour with somebody and after that hour, You've been so kind, you've made them feel so important, you've done such a good job, you've paid such close attention to them, that literally, they're not gonna tell you this, but internally and in their gut, they've choose you as someone that they wanna look up to. This is the secret. You guys can all do this, okay? Now, will it take time? Yeah. Anything that's hard, anything that pays well, it always takes time. But can we do it? Yeah, and by the way, if you made a decision which is how anything changes, to start now, you guys would sell more cars when you leave today. Everybody in this room should leave and go sell two cars. If you don't, who gives a shit? We'll do it tomorrow. But we're not gonna go back to our old life. We'll never retreat. Guys, and never, ever doubt yourself. Rule number one in sales, doubt is a traitor. What do we do to traitors? We kill them. Okay, not really. Because I want to get to HR. All right because there could be some traitors in here and we would just let you go. But what, what is doubt? Doubt is a traitor. Don't ever doubt yourself. You're gonna have people doubt you, right? But not you. You don't doubt yourself. You're gonna have people doubt you. You don't doubt yourself. Everything that I'm telling you guys today is a conversation I have with me all day long. I'm having this with me. Listen, who's y'all's coach? You. Well, how are you coaching you? This sucks, things are bad, I can't believe I'm here, I need to go do something else. Or like, man, I can't believe I got this opportunity this is insane. You know, like people that can come from with nothing can end up with the most. If I'm ruining my life right now, if I don't have anything great, I can make a decision. I can change all that right now. And by the way, this is how it works. And you know what the most beautiful thing about all this is? I'm going to tell you something super cool. Is that when you guys do what I'm telling you to do today, you don't even understand how many people's lives you're going to change. Every place that you go, everyone that you talk to, whenever people said, oh, uh, hey, what do you do for a living? I uh, sell cars. I was so proud of selling cars. I still am to this day. I love selling cars. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for selling cars. Selling cars, if you don't make it in this, you can't make it in nothing. Okay, we're in a space that'll pay you hundreds of thousands of dollars. Everyone's an amateur. Okay, when you go in a UFC ring, you fight real dudes that are really, really strong and really, really trained, and you can really get your ass whipped. In the automotive industry, they're all weak. They're all asleep, they're all complaining. I know it's not this way in this company, but in most companies, we have whiny little complainer baby managers. Okay? You guys must be the leader. 
leaders, they're not title people. They're, they're the sales people. Okay? And the managers need your help. The managers want the sales team to be the leaders. Okay? Like, there doesn't need to be a meeting called by a manager. I could call a meeting as a salesperson and fire up my team. We do life together. And by the way, lastly, you guys don't compete against each other. You compete externally against other companies. Okay? We have camaraderie in-house. I'm like, dude, I'm going to smoke you, dude. I'm going to smoke you. You ain't going to catch me. I like that. But, dude, you never want to tear someone down in your own house. Never. You guys' goal is to build each other up. Don't you guys do life with each other? Okay, and by the way, if there's like, yeah, but this one guy, can I ask you a question? Have you treated him good? Have you changed? Have you been your best A player? There might be a good chance that if you're best A, hey, I'm not telling you to drain your energy on him. I'm saying if you become who you might become, most of those people convert over and goes, dude, you inspired me. I want to be like you now. Or, or they may never say it, but they may slowly start changing because they see it. Okay, that's my goal with you guys. My goal is to have you guys change lots of people's lives. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254. 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. So sell with your heart right here, guys, which means you got to be in love with what you do. This is, what, this is the great separator. This separates you. Okay, all right, let's go to the next one. All right, so I, so I put this right here. The first 90% of the time, we're literally not taking any money. We're building when value exceeds price, the price will never be too high. Am I right? Okay, the first 90% of the time I'm, I'm with a client, is money exchanging hands, yes or no? Okay, so is money going to exchange hands the last 10% of the time? Do you want the last 10% of the time to go quick, go fast, close it up, and wrap it up? Yeah, so if you do, we got to do the first 90% right. Since money doesn't exchange hands the first 90% of the time, what must you do? I need an emotional roller coaster, folks. I need you to get these people bought in. Everybody say buy-in. Buy in. Okay, when you want someone to go do a mission with you, you have to get them bought in on the mission. Am I right? Whose job is it to get them bought in? You got to get them bought in on the dealership. You got to get them bought in on our beliefs, the core values of the company, why people choose us. You got to get them bought in on the service we provide to people. You got to get them bought in on we have the best inventory in the world. You got to get them bought in on you. You got to get them bought in on everything. This is your job. And you must increase the value extremely high. When the value's high, when the price hits, they don't care, man. They're sold. This last 10% of the times when you collect 100% of the money, you never want to put money on the table and realize you didn't do your job right. Because now you just lost a client, you just lost a commission, you just lost a deal because you messed up, okay? So I put here, paint pictures, tell stories, sell ideas, sell situations. Your whole time you're talking to them, you're explaining why people choose us. Everybody, right, everybody say this, say research shows. Research shows everybody in this world wants to buy from Lithia. Why do they want to buy from Lithia? Because our core values and our standards. The fact that you came here today, you must have a magic rabbit foot in your pocket. You got one? Huh? Because it's your lucky day. You ever won the lottery? You just have. The fact that you came here today, you won. Hey, I'm going to get his ass right now. You guys hear me? Is this, how, is this how selling should be done? Yes. By the way, what did I say? You're like, Andy came in, he trained us and said something about a magic rabbit foot in his pocket. You guys are missing it. I know, I'm not very funny, but I know I got to say things to crack people up. I know I got to do stuff to be silly. Okay, listen to me. Walk arounds, test drives. So the first time that the, that the client envisions owning the car for the very first time. You must understand what a walk around is. Do I want you to envision yourself owning this? When do I do it? Before I even let you drive. <laughs> Folks, we're going to drive it here in a minute, but I've got to show you this. A lot to see here. Come with me. Come with me. Come with me. I don't even need to know product knowledge. Hey, product knowledge is great. Go do whatever Dane says. But are you excited about what you're selling? Like, that's the idea. Be a product knowledge, you know, uh, this is an 18-inch alloy. They don't give a shit about that. They want, they want to feel the sizzle for, on the steak. It's a sizzle. Okay, who's going to provide it? You guys. And some of you, I need you to understand this. I'm an introvert. You may say, oh, you don't look like an introvert. No, I train myself to not be one anymore. I promise, all of you in here right now, you got great environments. you got great companies. That is a, a recipe to either kill crush it and put everyone else out of business or become a damn country club. We got to make sure that we're not becoming a country club. And the only way that we cannot become a country club is 
feed ourselves new information every day and train. And to truly change, by, guys, understand the whole value in training is to change. Please understand this. I hate rules. I was just talking to Mike. I said, I hate rules. I hate rules. But I like standards. Okay? You won't always get your goals, but you'll always get your standards. You'll get your standards. What you're getting paid right now are the standards you set for yourself. Are you okay with what you're getting now? If not, raise your damn standards. Standards are things that you must live by as a human being that define your beliefs. Okay? I promise you, listen guys, once you start doing this stuff, you're going to crush everybody. All right, let's go to the next one. Put here the difference between sales and closing. Selling is what happens before two things happen. Number one, money. You close when money's on the table or you close when someone says no. Does that make sense? Okay, do you guys take phone calls? Okay, you take phone calls, how long have you been selling for? 10 years. Okay, you ready? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give him, I'm gonna role play with him for a second. Is that cool? What do you sell? Honda? Okay, so I, let's say I enter a credit application on a Honda. He calls me, he's like, hey Andy, great news, I got your credit application. Wanna let you know I got that Honda. Hey, by the way, what time can you make it down? That's normally how it goes, right? Okay, cool, I say, hey, I appreciate you. Um, by the way, before I come in, what's my payment gonna be? Uh, we go over the payments, whatever you get here. Got to choose the right car, make sure it's the right... right well, I, I like the car, sure. but I just want to know what my payment's going to be before I drive all the way down there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, we can go over that information when you get here. I want to make sure it's the right car, right price, and it's the right, right vehicle for you. Yeah, can you give me an idea? See, that's where we end. Do you guys see it? You ready? How long have you been selling for? Two months. Okay, I'm not going to ask you. <laughs> He's doing it 10 years or two months. It ain't going to work. How long have you been selling for? Four months. You? Three years. Three? Okay, cool. Hey, what's my payment going to be? It's okay. Just tell me what you say. <laughs> it's okay. Don't worry about it. Right here. What's my payment going to be? Oh, that's a great question. Actually, I've got all of your information with my finance guy. We're going to go over all of that as soon as I show you the car. Have you come in, test drive it, make sure that you like it. Okay. Can you give me an idea before I drive in? What do you want your payment to be? 250 Okay, great. That sounds great to me. Come on in. See, but I don't like that either because those payments don't exist. Right, but, but so you don't have to trap yourself like that. Because listen, let's say you're his boss, right? Well, watch this, and, and he's like, hey, I got these people here, and uh, you know, they want a 250 payment, but then you go sh show them a 700 payment, and they're all pissed off. Well, I talked to your sales guy, he said 200, he asked me where I wanted to be, and I told him 250, and he said that'd be fine. And you're like, ma'am, there's no way you can be at 250, though. It physically doesn't make sense. Then you're like, dude, why did you even ask what they wanted to be at? Why don't you just get them in? How can we get people in? Word tracks, okay? Listen, do you guys wanna never get caught off guard again? Okay, I want you to do me a favor. I'm gonna tell you how I, how I closed everybody. This is simple, and I don't need to role play with you. Okay, are you paying attention? Okay, he's like, fuck. Yes. It's like, come on, dog, I'm trying to get you paid here. Hey, remember I told you about distractions? Hey, by the way, do me a favor. Managers, when you see people's eyes, you know what loose eyes are and you know what focused eyes are? When you see loose eyes, don't get distracted. That's what I do with my team all day long. Don't get distracted. Don't get distracted. I make them do push-ups. I'm not asking anybody to do them. I'm like, dude, if I see you not paying attention, you're going to do 10 push-ups. Okay, so if somebody says to me, this is how I took phone calls. Someone calls me and they're like, oh, I'm like, hey, what time can you make it in? They're like, Andy, what's my payment going to be? Everybody write this down. I want you to write this down. I'm going to show you how to empty the bullets out of anybody's gun. Say, I'm so glad you asked that. Okay, if somebody says, what's your best price? Say, I'm so glad you asked that. Guys, are you scared of overcoming the price? Most salesmen are in here. Most of you in here, if I say, what's your best price? You immediately would go to a state of fear and you're like, uh, well, what? And it's like, dude, I'm so glad you asked that. Calm down. It's not a big deal. Everybody, it's no big deal. They're wanting to buy something from you. They're this close away. Be the professional. I say, I'm so glad you asked that. I say our licensed finance department uses a very strict budgeting system that ensures, here, everybody listen up. I'll tell you what it is, you can write it down, but I want you to listen to me. Somebody says, yeah, say, hey, what's my payment gonna be? I say, well, I'm so glad you asked that. Our licensed finance department uses a very strict budgeting system that ensures that you don't ever have to worry about your payment being too high. As a matter of fact, most of our clients that bought actually left with a much lower payment than they were expecting. So getting to know you here on the phone, we're phenomenal in that area. What time can you make it down? Right now or after work? And by the way, what color vehicle will you do? I mean, automatically change the subject. You guys must do two things. Number one, overcome and then pivot. Okay, listen to me. Never ask them what they want their payment to be. Listen to me, they'll never give you an answer that you're okay with. 
That's like asking somebody, what do they want to pay for a car? Okay, uh, hey, can I get a better deal? Well, what did you want to pay? <laughs> you think they're gonna be like, oh, just take 300 off. It's like, then why did you even ask? Why would you even set yourself up to do a good job for an hour and a half and then literally drown yourself, right? So in any situation, no matter what anybody says, I said, I'm so glad, hey, what's my trade worth? I'm so glad you asked that, right? That's how I do that, okay? I'm so glad you asked that. Hey, wh what's your best price on this car? I'm so glad you asked that. What we do here is a little bit differently. We use what's called market-based pricing. You go into your clothes, but you always empty the bullets out of their gun by showing them that you're not nervous. I know you're nervous when I ask you how, how, to, how to guarantee all of you never get nervous again is by saying, I'm so glad you asked that. Can you guys just remember? Just remember, I probably do it to work every time. But now listen to me. Did I tell them that they were going to get a lower payment than they wanted? No, I painted a picture about someone else. I said, I'm so glad you asked that. I said, our licensed finance department uses a very strict budgeting system that ensures that you don't ever have to worry about your payment being too high. We can't give them a higher payment than they can a, a budget for anyway, so it doesn't matter. And I say, most of our customers that had the same concern as you in the past actually left with a much lower payment than they were expecting. So getting to know you here on the phone, we're phenomenal in that area. Um, what time can you make it down? Right now or would after work be best? By the way, what color vehicle are you going to be pulling up in? That way I know it's you when you get here. Also, I'm going to send a picture of you right now when I hang up so you can put a name with the face and I'll also send you my address so you can just tap on it when you're coming down. And since you have the picture of me, you also know who to ask for when you get here. Is that fair? Boom, divert, 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 we're off. You guys get it? it, it what, they weren't freaking out. You start freaking out. Never get triggered. You guys must understand this. Is it, is it bad for a client to hit you with an objection? No. It's their job. Yes, it's their job, guys. Understand this. Are you likable? Can you be trusted? They're ready to buy a car. They want to do business with the pro. Guys, only you can mess it up. I assure you that if you'll just take some of the stuff that I taught you these last two hours, hey, this is not sales training. I lied to you guys. Because sales training, it doesn't even work if the person doesn't want to change. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Dane can yell at you until, until you're blue in the face. And by the way, I did what all you do. Whatever you got, I still sell today. I close, I close deals every day. I, I love it. I, I made up with it. I'm obsessed. I said psycho competitor at the beginning of this conversation today. And that's what I want you guys to be. I want you to be a psycho competitor. But here's what I want you to do. Everybody write down the top five objections you get all the time. Just when we leave here today. The price too high, payments too high, want more for my trade. I need to think about it. I'll get back to you. It's getting too late. I don't care. Write it down, and what I want you to do is I want you to do me a favor. Everybody write down five by five. Like five times five. I want you to take the top five objections, and here's what I'm going to tell you to do, okay? Can everybody, I want you to write this down, five by five, and then I want you to write this underneath this. Who are the five people that are going to get me to where I want to go? I want you to decide who are the five people, and maybe you can't find five, but your goal is to find five. By the way, it doesn't even have to be me. I just want you to be great five people that are going to get you to where you want to go. And I'm going to tell you what I would do. And these people are obviously people that are in your industry. Does that make sense? Okay. So if he's my manager, I'm going to say, Hey boss, when somebody says I'm going to get back with you, um, what do you say? Right? And he's like, well, normally this is what I say. I'm going to write that down. Does that make sense? And then I'll be like, Hey dude, you sell 30 cars a month and I sell 10. When somebody says I'm going to get back with you, what do you usually say? And then he tells me and I write it down. And then I go over to you. And then, and I find people who are successful. And I write down all five of the objections that I can find from different human beings for that one objection. And then what I do is that I develop a word track for myself out of what they, all five people said that I like. Now watch, here, here's the key. I write it down and you have to write it down. And then, by the way, because I'm explaining how this works. You have to rewrite it about seven to ten times. When you do that, your brain starts to skip ahead and say, dude, I know this one now. Okay? I know all my word tracks. I know them like the back of my hand. The reason why is because when my back was against the, wall, against the wall, no matter what was going on, I could deliver and execute them perfectly. I never got stuck. I never, I never put myself in a spot where I couldn't close it or I couldn't handle it. And I, I needed to make sure that I never showed the customer any uncertainty. We may talk to someone and they may feel like that we're a good person, but then when the money hits the table, all of a sudden the salesman unravels. Listen to me. If you flinch, 
you're a liar. If you swallow, uh, what's your best price? Um, well, why, why'd you swallow? Like, like, what well, dude, you ain't swallowed in two hours and all of a sudden you're swallowing? Okay, all of a sudden you start saying, um, but, you ain't said but in two hours. All of a sudden you're saying but real fast? Like, listen to me, do not change your damn state in closing, no matter what. When they hit you with an objection, I'm so glad you asked that. Move right into it. By the way, lock eyes with them. People need to see your eyes when you're talking. They need to see if they can believe you. Can they believe you? Can they believe you? How hard have you trained? How hard have you trained? How, how many times have you been put under pressure by sitting there with the, a role play partner saying, hey, ask me at the best prices. And then we just role play that back and forth. And dude, people laugh at us and they're gonna think that we're stupid. We're the ones that are gonna get paid. Okay, and by the way, our clients, who we care about, who do matter, who we want to take care of, who are going to give us this damn good life when we take care of them, money made, money paid, this beautiful life, dude, they're counting on you guys to be pros. They don't want to see you guys be amateurs. All it takes is one sentence to screw up a whole cell. One sentence. Now, I don't want you to be afraid of that. I want you to lean into it. So I just want to tell you guys, my whole goal with getting with you today is this, I have one agenda. It's for you guys to get the life that you want. It's where at the end of your life, you guys are gonna think back to the people that impacted your life at certain points. Be where your feet are. Be present when you're at work, be present when you're at home. When you're at the gym, be present at the gym. Don't be looking at your phone. When I see people at the gym on their phone, I'm like, dude, why'd you even come to the gym? Like, why? Like, why didn't you just stay where you wanted to be? Listen, why most people never get what they want is because they're never really where they are. A lot of you are at work today, but you're thinking about all the problems you have in your life that, which you can't solve at work today. What an idiot. So you need to be here at work today. You need to do a great job. You need to be present and you need to outwork everybody. If you don't have a customer, you need to be looking for a customer, either making the phone calls, finding one on the lot, going to the service department, making the dials, or training to get better. What I've learned is whenever I can't seem to get ahead and I'm struggling, you know what I do? I train. It always gives me a new perspective. It always gives me an edge. You know, guys, in our training system that we have, I don't want you to be me, and I don't want to be you. I want you guys to find you. As I give you guys word tracks, people can always say, oh, well, that doesn't work. Listen, dude, guys, I made a lot of money selling cars, and I make a lot of money now, and I want to tell you guys something. I have a good life, and I love my life, and I'm proud of me, and I made a lot of mistakes along the way, but studying somebody, there's always one thing you pick up, five by five. Find people that you can study in your own company. Don't just ask them, write it down, develop your own word tracks. Once you write it down 10 times, memorize it. Once you memorize it, you gotta say it in the mirror. I know, now this is where I'll lose a lot of you. Like, say it in the mirror. Guys, I need to see what you look like. I want you to see you when you say it. I want you to see you delivering. Remember I told you the only difference between all of us is the way that we deliver information. I'm deadly at delivering information and I know it. And if people don't like it, that's fine. I got results and I get big results and I want you to get them too. So I know the way you deliver things, you must become a new person to deliver things differently. Am I right? Would you agree? You can't stay the same person and go deliver things differently. You got to change. So I want everybody today, number one, if you've had a screwed up life, if you've done anything wrong, if you've been a loser, I don't care. Give yourself permission today to, to, to move forward. Okay, and number two, give, your, give yourself permission to have a good life. But understand that no one is going to make you change but you. The only way your family's life is going to change but you. And I want to say one other thing, okay? I was the one in my family that was going to be the difference maker. Okay, it was going to be me. I watched years go by of mediocrity and average shit happen in my family. And I was the one who decided to wake up and fight. Now, if you guys will do everything that I told you, put yourself first, take care of yourself. Don't complain when you go home. When you're at work, be a freaking contributor. Contribute to your company. Make it a better place while you're here. Be the example for everybody in this world. And does any of this have to do with sales training? Nope. nope. Will it make you a bit more money? No. Hell yeah. You guys will get rich. And then lastly, if you'll develop, and this is the last thing I'll say, the secret advice that I could give you to dust everybody is to out self-develop everybody. Remember when I told you guys early on about dreaming big? Anytime somebody starts to slow down, it's because their dream was too small, they get close to hitting it and then they, and they back off.
The reason why I'm so psycho about training all the time is because when I train and I study and I stay clear-minded and I work out and I take care of myself and I'm doing the right thing, because I know I can be really bad or really good. You know what I'm saying? Okay? Like, it, it, it allows me to dust everybody. A lot of you in here, even if you listen to me today, after six months and you start getting to your goal, you'll back off and slow down. Okay? Never back off. Never get satisfied. Dude, this, this world will give you whatever the hell you want, okay? But the automotive industry will give it to you. Now you guys need to change, okay? So with the information I gave you, all right, do you guys feel in your heart that you guys, you guys are ready to make a change, okay? I want you guys to think, who are the people that are counting on you guys to make this change? Listen, I made a lot of false promises to my wife for a long time, and I told her I was gonna change and be different. And I let her down a lot. But when I was 39, I made the ultimate decision and I never looked back. And that's when my whole life changed. And I want to tell you guys that the best thing that you guys can do today is not go tell everybody you're going to change. It's for you to keep your word between you and yourself that you're going to start doing things differently. But keep your word. Treat yourself good, guys. And right now, let's go get paid. Let's make a lot of money. Let's kill it this next year. And uh, I want you guys to be the example for everybody. And there's one of you in here. I don't know who it is, but I've got... 30 people, there's one of you in here that literally, dude, you guys will change millions of people's lives. Probably the biggest underdog in the room. It doesn't always have to be the best one. All right, you guys ready? Yep. All right, let's get out of here. Love you guys. Hey guys, I just want to tell you, you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.